Well, for more on President Trump's new executive order and its impact on tourism and beyond, I'm joined by Tamar Jacoby. She's the president and CEO of Immigration Works USA. Thank you for joining us. Great to be here. So as we heard there, tourism clearly took a hit once the initial ban was issued and several, several travel sites reporting that downturn. So how do you see this revised order affecting that? I don't think it's going to be much different. The, the differences are mostly technical. I mean, there's one country that Iraq was on the list, now it's off the list. But this isn't just a reaction to the specifics of the order. This isn't really just about refugees. This is about foreigners in general feeling, wait, the door is closing. These people don't like foreigners, don't want foreigners. I think it's a much broader chilling effect, not related to the specifics of the order. So I don't see that the slight differences in the order are going to make that much difference. So you think the message is essentially the same? I think it is. Now, we saw that um, new data is also showing that bookings from, um, bookings from the U.S. to the Middle East, a lot of people, as we mentioned, afraid to travel because they're not sure about what's going to happen when they come back. So how is this affecting the actual countries in the Middle East? Well, I mean, so 25, I think it's down 25% the flow from Americans back. So who are those people? Those are, the, those are families who live here. Those are people who do business here or perhaps come from there going home to see their families. Of course, it will, it will affect, the, it will affect the, again, the feeling in those countries about America and, and the budget. And these are countries that we need to be our allies. We do not want to be saying to them, we don't like you and we're cutting the ties between us. So given that message, a lot of people are wondering, is this a short-term effect that we're going to see on tourism or potentially something more long-term? No, I think it could potentially be longer because for a couple of reasons. The first thing, what they're going to do now, the reason they're allegedly ha having this pause, is to review all the countries in the world, what kinds of information they send us about people. Do they send us enough information for us to vet the people? And they may start adding people to the list. So the list could grow longer, and that will go on for a long time. But again, it's not the specifics of the order that are important so much. It's all the different things they're doing to say, you know, the president says America, hire American, um, you know, use American, hire American. But this is th that there's another side to that, which is we don't like foreigners. We're not interested in foreigners. We're cutting ourselves off from the world. And as you see, people hear that right away and they're not as eager to come here. And clearly there's going to be an economic impact. We know that the, Euros, the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis said tourist-related spending in the United States just in 2015, $1.56 trillion and created 7.6 million jobs. So with that being said, how important is this overall to the economy? It's very important, and it, and it will have broader effects than tourism. I mean, just the refugee order alone, the meatpacking industry is very highly dependent on refugee workers. But as the as this attitude toward foreigners spreads to other parts of the economy, for example, they the, over the weekend they suspended fast-track processing for highly skilled temporary workers, for H-1B workers. You know, if they start to, uh, they, if, if this spreads from refugees to other places, again, countries are going to get the message. People, many fewer people are going to come, and people we need for economic growth are going to be more hesitant to come here. So besides the immediate travel-related industries that people may be aware of, what perhaps are some of the other affected High industries? High tech, of course. I mean, again, again, you have to go beyond the travel bin, right? It's this general message of we're not so interested in you anymore. We need, people, we need foreign people in high-skilled industries like, like IT. We need foreign workers in low-skilled industries like meatpacking and agriculture and construction. And then there's colleges. A lot of our colleges are highly dependent on foreigners. So all across the economy, foreigners are, are, are help invigorate our country and grow the economy. And this is, if, this is a chilling message across the, the board. So if you're an employer, you're a business owner, or you're one of these colleges, and you're, and you're wondering what's going to happen with your ties to some of these affected countries, what do you think they're thinking at the moment? Well, I think lots of them are thinking, how do I get out there and say, it's not us, we do really want you, this is a narrower thing than it looks like. But again, I think that's the hard part. It's what you said right at the beginning, this is about, this sends a broader message to people that it's hard to keep, keep in the box. And we know that Iraq was obviously removed for the list, but it still remains Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Now, this is for people who, if you already currently have a visa, they're saying that the ban will, it'll be, um, for, it'll 90, be okay. for 90 days, but you, you'll be okay. Any chance then, perhaps, of other countries being removed from the list? Again, I suspect they're going to add countries to the list, not take them away. But again, I just keep thinking of the message to the man on the street. You know, the man on the street isn't going to say, oh, I'm from Saudi Arabia, this doesn't affect me. He's going to say, President Trump doesn't like Muslims, and he's shutting the door to Muslims, and why should I go to America? And then Europeans are going to start to say, well, this President Trump is shutting the door to foreigners. They don't like foreigners. Why should I go to America? I mean, the numbers in your, in your um, set-up clip, those weren't just 
people from these six countries not coming. That's a much broader chilling effect already. Exactly, and, and clearly it's just the beginning. We'll have to see, as you said, how things um, fall down. So thank you so much for joining us, as always, Tamar Jacoby, President and CEO of Immigration Works USA.